All right, so I polled my audience and I asked them, what's the one thing you're struggling with the most in the gym? And of course, real, these peak guys were getting stronger on their incline press, making gains in the gym, but it's the shoulder press that really can be the most stubborn. When they say you can't build big shoulders naturally, 179 pounds. Now, it's a sort of a catch-22 because it's also the shoulder press getting strong in it, it's really gonna make your physique pop and separate from the pack. There's a lot of guys that got, you know, a pretty big chest, sometimes big arms, but it's very, very few that have those really well-developed shoulders. And again, I'm a big fan of doing, you know, some high volume rest pauses, lateral raises, rear delts, that can really help. But the only way you're gonna build very big shoulders is if you get very, very strong on the shoulder press. So I look back at all my training notes when I made the absolute best gains in the gym on shoulder press, when my shoulders just started to really blow up years and years ago, and I had a system, a very simple three-step system. With shoulder press, it's hard to really hit PRs five, six, seven, eight weeks in, the, in a row, okay? It's one of those exercises that can be stubborn. So my system was very, very simple. I started with standing barbell press. I did three weeks of standing barbell press. Now, if you have micro plates and you got, you know, 1.25 pound plates, you can add two and a half pounds total each workout, which is really, really good. Otherwise, you can do, you know, basically five reps, one workout, the next week you go to six, and then when you get six reps, you increase it by five pounds the next week, and you might go for four or five. Regardless, you're gonna do three weeks of the standing barbell press. I like to do it reverse pyramid, three sets. A heavy set, you know, for four to five, you know, another set for maybe six reps, and the final set, eight reps, okay? So you do three weeks of standing bubble press. Now, if you keep hitting the standing bubble press, it's very common you're gonna either hit a plateau, or sometimes you come into the gym and you're weaker. You got six reps, and you, and, or you got five reps, and come in, and you only get four. So I really find, this is when exercise rotation really shines. Do three weeks of standing bubble press. Then you're gonna do three weeks of the seated dumbbell shoulder press. Now, I like to go a little bit higher on the seated dumbbell shoulder press. My first set will be six to eight reps, Second set, eight to 10. Third set, I'll still do eight to 10 reps. Reverse pyramid, three minutes rest between, okay? And so the benefit of the seated dumbbell shoulder press is that you don't have to have as much core stabilization. You're sitting down, you've got the back support, and so you're really gonna overload your shoulders. It's gonna be more of an upper body dominant movement. Whereas with the standing bubble press, it's a lot of core stability. To hold a heavy weight and press it requires your whole body working together. So with the seated version, you're really just able to really strengthen and build you know, the pressing muscles. Now, after doing three weeks of that, it's not enough to come back to the standing press. I've done that, but what worked way, way better was then doing three weeks of a standing one-arm dumbbell press. And this is really gonna overload the core. You have to have a super strong core, you gotta keep your abs tight, your glutes tight, and do three weeks in a row of the standing press. And each week, you should be a little bit stronger, okay? And that's gonna build an amazing core. And so then after those three weeks, you go back to the standing bubble press, and like you've built up your shoulder strength, you strengthened your core, you've kind of created, you help strengthen any weaknesses from the left and the right side, and then you get three weeks in a row really strong. Now you might be the same weight you left off with the standing bubble press, but you're gonna to start to make progress. So if you just follow this system, doing three, 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 you will start to systematically build up your standing press. And a good goal, if you can put 15 pounds in your standing bubble press, that's a really strong goal. If you can go up 30 pounds, that's like a sign you've put on like 15 pounds of muscle, okay? So a really good goal, maybe you're around 120 on the standing press or five. If you can get to 135, that's really good. If you go from 120 to 150, that's insane. Your shoulders will be popping, okay? So even if over the course of six months, you gain 15, 20 pounds to your standing press, that actually is very, very good. Most people make no gains on their shoulder press. They're stubborn on it. So if you can just get stronger, that's a very good sign. Now, the last thing I'll say is that I also recommend you need to work with your body. So there's certain movements that you're gonna feel like you make really, really good progress on and certain exercises that you're very stubborn on. So I really like the standing barbell press when I was building up to about my body weight for five, six reps. Once I got to that level, the amount of core strain that there is and tightness and how neurally fatiguing it is, I don't do it as often. I actually prefer the seated dumbbell shoulder press. But it's also important to find out what exercise are you able to make the best gains on. If you're super stubborn on a movement, my belief isn't that you should just really focus on that weakness. My belief is that do the exercise that you can get very, very strong on, and that's gonna allow you to gain the most muscle. Because if you gain 20 pounds to a lift, you're gonna gain a lot of muscle. If you don't gain anything on it, there's no reason, no signal for your body to really produce muscle. And so another strategy to get strong on, you know, again, the overhead press is 
one of the best exercises to build strength on is the weighted dip. If you can just build 20, 30 pounds to your weighted dips, it does not take long. I've done that in six weeks. If you can build 20 pounds to your weighted dips, you're gonna have also stronger triceps to really get that lockout on. So if you're doing the shoulder press and you're getting stuck here, if you can just get strong on weighted dips and do that on your chest day, you're gonna really help support your ability to press heavier weights. Now, try this out. It works incredibly well. And again, one thing that can really help you to build a great physique, build bigger shoulders, is having higher levels of free testosterone. In fact, the masculine traits of a good physique are bigger upper chest, shoulders, and traps. So when you increase free testosterone, you can support the growth of these areas. And that's why we developed the Mojo. We've seen guys increase their free testosterone 30, 40, 50%. We had an outlier of a guy tripling his free testosterone from 5.6 NGs over DL to the 16, 17 range. Now that's really unheard of, but a 20 to 30% increase in free testosterone can help support building up those shoulders and the upper chest. And the guy, Bridger, that was able to triple his free T, he went up 20, 30 pounds on his shoulder press and he got way more jacked. So make sure if you wanna really optimize your gains, the Mojo can support you, especially if your free testosterone levels are around the 10 to 15 NGs over DLs and you get into the high teens, low 20s, that's where you can really shine. And my free T's are in the 20s and that's really helped me build awesome shoulders. One more thing I wanna address, of course, is that most people just think the muscle that packs on your upper body, that all the size goes to your chest and back, that these are the areas that have the most room for growth. And based on the research, based on really measure, measuring muscle tissue in 3D scans, what they found is the shoulders have the most potential for muscle size. Secondly is the tricep. So if you're doing a lot of those shoulder presses, focusing getting strong on them, and you're doing some weighted dips, you're gonna build an awesome physique. And I really find that this strategy of doing the standing press, the seated dumbbell shoulder press and the standing one arm, which is an old school lift that a lot of the old school bodybuilders used to do, does an amazing job at building incredible shoulders and a very strong core. If you combine on your other upper body day doing the weighted dips, you're gonna bust through plateaus like clockwork.